Hey, this is Ethan here with Game Night Studios. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about airbrushing. First thing to know about airbrushing is it will drastically increase the quality of your minis and you don't really need to spend a ton of money to get into it. A lot of people think you do, you don't. First airbrush I ever got, this is actually the compressor for it, I got it off of Wish for like $45 and it came with the compressor and the airbrush and it worked. It worked fine. You don't need to spend an arm and a leg on an airbrush and a compressor. This is a super simple one. You just press the button. It turns on. You plug that into the airbrush and then it works. It's that simple. Parts of the airbrush you should probably be aware of. Uh, the nozzle, obviously, the tip there. Usually those unscrew. There's not really a whole lot of reason to unscrew them unless you're cleaning them. The trigger here, you push down, air comes out, pull back. It uh, pulls the needle back, Cody. allowing paint to flow from the reservoir out through the front of the airbrush. If you unscrew this little thing on the back here, it allows you to pull the needle out, which is how you clean it. And if you get clogs, uh, a good technique is actually to unscrew this a little bit, hold the button down so that just air is shooting out. Then as you physically pull the needle back, it will force a lot of pressure through and it'll usually clear out the clogs. I'm gonna start off with some mistakes I made when I first started using the airbrush. Because there's a learning curve to everything and airbrushes are one of those things where if you don't know some tricks, they get clogged a lot, they become way more hassle than they're worth, but with a little bit of just trial and error you figure out things that work and then you can really up the level of your painting. For starters, if you use anything in a, in a pot, like the Citadel paints or the Privateer Press paints, they do airbrush, uh, but in my experience it needs to be a relatively newer pot for it to work really well. Like. I used a privateer press one that's just been sitting around for years and it had clumps and stuff in it so I figured if I stir it enough mix it up enough it should airbrush and it kind of did but those clumps eventually get stuck and then you got to go through a, a whole bunch of hoops to clean them out so I switched over to dropper paints for that exact reason uh, like I said nothing wrong with the Citadel or the privateer press paints they're really good paints just you gotta watch them a little bit if you're airbrushing with them and they're old. Brand new ones you shouldn't have any kind of issue with at all. Most important thing about painting in general is you have to have a helper cat. Helper kitties help help a lot. They knock over paint, they do all sorts of fun stuff for you. They get fuzz on everything. Speaking of helper cats, like this one here, they seem to want to get on your lap and in your business the second you start painting, if they're anything like mine. Uh, it is very, very helpful to have a pair of tweezers just sitting on the workstation so that if you get cat hair on a mini, you can just pluck it right off and then put it down and get back to work because nothing can stop the helper cat from helping because they're so helpful. Other things I've learned over the years to get non-specific airbrush paints to paint, for instance, the Reaper stuff, the, the stuff I use, the stuff I like a lot, uh, I don't ever actually buy specific airbrush paints. I just buy little dropper bottles of Norman paints and then thin them out in the airbrush. And the way you thin them out, first off, you put some water in the reservoir. Like you start off with a couple drops of water. then add a couple drops of airbrush thinner. That is a nice little trick of the game that I found out way too late and it would have saved me a lot of time, effort, and trouble if I would have figured it out sooner. Airbrush thinner thins down your paint, obviously, and it, it increases dry time. So you have more time to mess with it in the airbrush before it dries up and messes up your nozzle or messes up the inside of your airbrush. So mix some water with some airbrush thinner before you put any paint in it, mix it together, and then add some of the paint, mix that up, and then you should be good to go and you shouldn't have any clogs. Uh, if you're not too familiar with the airbrush, it's always a better idea to start off with less paint, just a couple drops, airbrush it on, 
if it's way too thin or it's just it's taking way too many coats then add a bit more paint stir it up go with that uh, eventually you'll find a good ratio where it's not too much and it's not too little too little you'll be there forever just doing 15 coats to get any color to stick and too much it's going to clog the airbrush another tool of the trade that i don't use too often but it does have its place airbrush reducer that does the opposite of the airbrush thinner it decreases dry time uh, so if you're painting something pretty big and you plan on continuously going that's not a whole lot of stop and mix more and it's just straight shot airbrush reducer is great because then you don't have to put one coat on leave it in front of a fan for a couple minutes pick it up again when it's dry airbrush again put it back under the fan you can just go with it and it should dry way faster with a little bit of high performance reducer in it. airbrush cleaner another essential tool you're going to want to get it as clean as you can with water first and then put a couple drops of airbrush cleaner just in the empty reservoir and just fire that through the airbrush try pulling the needle back as well while you're doing that it'll clean out the insides very well an important part to notice about the compressors they all have some sort of nozzle or setting somewhere where you can change the air pressure uh, with this one it's just a little knob here you screw back and forth so the only reason to decrease the air pressure would be if you want a more narrow stream coming out of the airbrush uh, generally you want somewhat higher pressure that'll force out a lot of the minor clogs you wouldn't really notice if you have a lower pressure on for a smaller stream for a more fine detail activity uh, you're going to get a bit more clogged so it's not a good idea to run it with low air pressure all the time it works really well if you're trying to get paint on one specific area of the model without getting uh, overspray on another side cleaning the airbrush is pretty simple uh, you don't need to take out all the inner workings and, and clean the inside of it too often as long as you keep up on your maintenance just from day-to-day -day use you should be fine I've had this for years I've never taken it apart and cleaned it and it works fine uh, for starters as soon as you're done painting as soon as you're done painting you don't just let it sit out take it over to a sink rinse it out with water until it's clean and clear then unscrew the back take the needle out do the same thing run water through it until it's clear pull the needle out make sure that the tip of the needle is clean that will get like dried specks of paint on it and whatnot if you don't clean that the entire airbrush won't work so the easiest way I found to do it is just run your thumbnail along the top until you scrape off the little specks at the end and then it's relatively clean put the needle back in screw it back on leave a little bit of water still in the reservoir and then go back to your desk screw in your air compressor and just blast that water out until it's empty put a couple drops of airbrush cleaner in there like four five six something like that and again spray that out unscrew the back pull the needle out while you're doing it that'll clean the needle that'll clean the inside as much as it needs to be cleaned and then just spray that until it's completely empty and then your airbrush is clean uh, when you store it just pull the needle out screw that back bolt on so you don't lose it because that is important and then just store it just like that that way there's an opening from the tip of your nozzle to your reservoir and air can get in there and dry it your needle's going to dry because it's out all by itself just store it just like that somewhere and you should be fine and good to go and it shouldn't need more maintenance than that the worst clog i ever had and i only had it once and i think it was because i was using dried out paints if you take off the end of the airbrush uh, you see it's got that little finite tip there where the needle goes in that actually got clogged once and it's way too fine to be able to clean it out very easily so what i had to do was get some pliers because this one just screws out but it's got you got to use pliers to do it so I unscrewed that and it's just a real tiny little Perfect. tip of the nozzle and I had nothing fine enough and rigid enough to get in there and clean it until I found these little beauties they're called floss threaders you can get them from any dentist's office I don't know if they sell them in just stores or not but yeah they just look like that they're just rigid 
They're not super rigid, but you know, they're stiff enough to clean out those clogs. Uh, and the base of it actually was too thick to fit in there. So I just cut the tip of it and fed that through. It popped out the small fleck of paint that was clogging my airbrush and it worked fine. So floss threaders, dentist office, just ask them for them and they do wonders for cleaning airbrushes. And they're probably good for your teeth as well. Point out, I've actually had someone ask me this in the past and uh, the airbrush hose it doesn't get paint in it. All it does is push air out into the paint or into the airbrush. So you don't need to clean it. It's fine. Not you. It's good to go. Same thing with the base opening of the airbrush. All that does is take air in. It's a one-way valve. It just goes in and out. Uh, so you don't need to clean that either. It's just the tip and the reservoir. This little chamber right here is where all the paint is. So you don't need to worry about cleaning anything behind that. So why use an airbrush in the first place? Uh, specifically, it helps for it helps for several things. It really helps when establishing the base coat of the mini. It it's super smooth, it's super thin, so you never have to worry about clumping paints if you're trying to get a fine detail on a mini. It is a lifesaver for that. Also, it is spectacular for fading and transitioning of colors. Uh, this guy's a prime example. I painted pretty much every color on him with the airbrush, at least in some fashion. And then I hit him with a wash to get some of the darker bits to him. But you can see on the tentacles how it goes from a dark under the, like underneath him where the shadow would naturally be, fading up to almost a white in that purple. That's all airbrush. You, I started out with a dark purple, got the base coat on there, and then gradually added uh, a pretty bright purple to it and got that light tone right there and then I think I added just a touch or two of white and hit just the tips of it just the peaks to get that natural highlight look and it worked out great that's that's airbrushing in a nutshell right there those are super smooth transitions I'm sure there's somebody out there who's skilled enough to do that with just a brush I can't so airbrushes they're they're a nice little cheat when it comes to, to painting minis. So this is my airbrush, it's an Awada Eclipse. Uh, I just wanted to show you really quick how to mix paint. You just start off with some water, uh, you put your finger over the nozzle, pull back on the trigger, that's gonna force air up into the pot and mix everything you have in there really well. Put a couple drops of airbrush thinner in there. Like I said, I didn't start off with an Awada Eclipse, that's, I moved up to that, that's a more expensive high-end airbrush. So just any kind you have that has the same mechanisms, it'll work the same. But again, airbrush and water, backflow technique, and then you just put somewhere between 5 to 10 drops of paint, depending on how thick it is, right in the back, stir it up with a brush, uh, and then do that backflow technique again to mix it all in there, and it should airbrush perfectly fine. Like I said, if you're using thicker paints, you might have some issues. I recommend using newer paints if you're going to throw them in an airbrush. And I'm going to show you how to do a quick transition. As you can see, it's not going on super thick, so add some more paint to the pot, do a couple extra coats. Sometimes you just got to do that. Some paints are thinner than others, some paints stay on a little bit better. But we got that basic orange on there, so now we're going to do a more interesting color change transition. We throw some blue in the pot, right into the pot with that orange. We don't add anything else, stir it up, and it's going to give us a nice kind of purplish red color uh, and the reason we don't take the paint out from the initial color is because it's going to help with speckling. Speckling is when you put a completely different color on top of another color and you get little specks everywhere. If you still have some of the original color in the pot when you put it on uh, you won't get that speckling effect. It'll just be just a flawless transition into the new color and just like with the initial coat you just put it on wherever you want to see the transition so at the bottom of this red let that dry and do a couple more coats it's going to fade into that purple flawlessly and you could even make it more interesting more dynamic by adding another color and fading the very very base of it and then it's a three color change transition and it just looks nice uh, it, in my experience I've had a lot of issues if you're painting a tank or like a big flat surface trying to get smooth base coats on them because uh, if you try to do it with a brush like let's say uh, 
I shouldn't say base coat, it's the base color, really. So you have a tank, you use spray paint or an airbrush or whatever you use to base it in black, and then you want to paint the tank red or blue or something like that. So you take your paintbrush out, you can thin your paint as much as you want, you try to get it on there, it's, it's clumpy. It's always clumpy. If you do that with an airbrush, it's going to be smooth, it's going to be perfect. And then you have that base coat already in the airbrush. All you got to do is add a lighter color to that and you can na just naturally put on your highlights right there. And then you already have the base done, smooth as it could possibly be, and the highlights done. Or at least the base highlights. You might still need to go back in and do edge highlights and all the fine detail of the mini, but the hard part's over. And you finished it the first step because of the airbrush. An important detail to bring up about airbrushes that I didn't really think about until this point. Uh, a big thing they help with is time. They're going to speed up your painting and they're going to up that level of detail. But most importantly, they're going to speed up your level of painting. And if you're just trying to put minis out for yourself so you can play with them on the tabletop and have them look nice, airbrushes are great for that. But if you're trying to get into the commission painting world, speed's a big factor because you have to break it down to a tail in your face because in the commission painting world you're going to break it down to how much you're making per hour and if you're brushing on base coats and gradients and it's just it's taking you forever that's going to bring down how much money you're making a lot compared to how much time you're putting into it airbrushes speed everything up and if you're increasing the quality of your mini you can always sell it for more so there's really no reason to not get an airbrush, honestly. Do take time to master. There is a learning curve to using an airbrush. Uh, the ratios of different water to airbrush thinner to paint you put in them. And every airbrush is different. Every compressor is different. They all function different together. So you just gotta feel your way through it. It's You get a feel for it pretty quick. I think I figured mine out inside of a week. Uh, get some base minis you don't really use and practice doing some stuff on them. Uh, it works really well for capes. Capes. I have a. I had a really hard time doing with just a paintbrush. But yeah, use the use minis you don't really care about at first to just practice on. The first application I ever really used the airbrush for was the base coats, just basing things in black. I started out with a paintbrush, and that was taking too long, so I moved to spray paint, and that did a pretty good job. But it wasn't getting the fine underside of the mini under the arms and stuff and I would base them in black spray paint and then I would put the black uh, airbrush primer in my airbrush and then I would hit all those fine details all the undersides that the spray paint just wouldn't hit and it worked great for that and that was all I was using it for the, for the longest time until finally I got out of my comfort zone and I started experimenting with uh, putting real paints in there and blending those colors together and it was phenomenal and it it took my stuff from zero to 60 instantly yeah, you know all you need to know now uh, if you have any questions please leave a comment i'm happy to answer you anything else you'd need to know any uh issues you've had in the past using your airbrush or trying to find one or like horror stories you've heard maybe you're looking for advice on how to avoid them just hit me up. I've never had any issues with mine that I couldn't fix, so let me know. I'm happy to help out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, check out the rest of my videos. I've got a lot of different painting tutorials up. Uh, I'm going to come out with new ones all the time, so always check back in. I do have a Twitch. Uh, I'm not on it too often currently. Uh, I do upload the videos that I put on YouTube to Twitch, so if you're looking for them and you'd rather look for them there, you can do that too. That's no problem. I do have an Instagram. If you have one of those and you want to look me up on it, feel free. I'll follow you back. Uh, it's game underscore night underscore studios. And that's my Instagram. Uh, I do also have an eBay store. If you just go into eBay and type in game night studios, my stuff will come up. Same thing with YouTube. If you ever want to find any of my other videos, just type in uh, game night studios on YouTube and my stuff will come up. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out. There's going to be plenty more videos coming. So, yeah, check back in.